This is an excerpt from Another Bad Day in Beverly Hills by Bradley Lewis, narrated by the author. Another Bad Day in Beverly Hills is available as a print book on Amazon.com, as an ebook on Nook and Kindle, and as an audio book on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. Criminology, thought Sheila. Whoever would have believed that little sheltered Sheila Sterling from Doheny Road would ever do anything with her life, let alone something exciting as sleuthing? Everyone in town had marked her off years ago as simply another dysfunctional trust fund baby. She scrolled on her dedicated Blackberry. She was a holdout to newer devices as she swiveled on her Spartan office chair and focused on her laptop, where she had been reading the NIH Health News. After recently finding out that she was pregnant, she was drawn to several interesting stories on fertility and its new batch of guru doctors. An in vitro fertility doctor in Orange County had inadvertently mixed different donor sperm with his patient's eggs without informing those women who had been trying to get pregnant with their own husband's sperm that there had been an era of biblical proportions. This was not a little inconvenience ending up with a child that had neither the expected mother nor father's DNA. Doctors were still saying whoops when something like this went awry. Sheila was certain that malpractice lawyers were already in line to get a crack at this one. Forget about all the unnecessary MRIs, statin pills, cancer screening for the elderly, and antidepressants rolled out like holiday candy. The new worst offender was the PSA test on the prostate, a system of care that had damaged more men than it had saved. The often failing American model of medicine kept Sheila on her toes. Sheila's Blackberry rang with its old-fashioned ringtone setting. She stood near the condo's tall sliding doors and gazed out over the colorful garden. Hello? It's me, Moses. Moses, I meant to call you. That's why I'm calling ESP. How are you? Fine, listen to this. Sheila, you heard of that baby guru, Dr. Jang? Yes. I'm going to take Bev Sarner to one of his lectures at Beverly Hills High School. Well, that fertility maven reported that he'd been robbed. He was mugged? Well, sort of. They stole his eggs, said Moses. They took the embryos. They stole what, Moses? What are you talking about? Sheila typed in a search with her free hand. As far as I can tell, someone broke into his lab and stole fertilized eggs. You're kidding, said Sheila. That's like stealing a person. I, I just read about the guy mixing up eggs with the wrong husband. Sheila's mind was already racing. There was something she was going to pursue. This definitely was it. She had made plans to meet with Moses Koshanian in order to find out what else he knew or could access. Sheila would first collect medical journal abstracts and articles on everything from sonar imaging to fetal heart rates. Sheila was still spending a lot of time with her friend Moses, an Iranian criminalist with the body of a defensive lineman. He was working as an assistant in the evidence office of the Beverly Hills Police Department. He was well liked and very well connected. He also taught criminalist courses while taking more advanced and different criminology classes at USC. She and Moses were forever emailing each other articles. Hold on, she said. Someone is beeping in. Hello, she said. I hate the fucking rain, said the familiar voice. Hey, Branch, what's up? I'm stalled on Santa Monica Boulevard in a downpour. Hold on, Branch. She went back to Moses. Moses, I've got to go. It's Brantley. Call me, whatever. Love you. Love you, too. She pushed the button and said to Brantley, I'm back. Fuck those pan-fried Asians. Why don't they stay home when it rains? It's a green light, a fucking green light, and they look around as if they were about to be engulfed by a tsunami. I hope this isn't another bad day in Beverly Hills, he thought. Sheila giggled. You are such a little racist. The familiar high-pitched laugh that followed filled the tight-ass cabin of his new black Bentley. He also giggled like a schoolboy. I should have kept the old one, was all he had said for months. The new engine and tooling by Volkswagen was nothing like the old one. The laughter subsided. Why are you in such a hurry? Good question. At least you calmed me down. You're the only one dumb enough to play golf in a drizzle, and I hate when you use that word. Please don't call it the F word. It's the fucking word. Well, I hate to drive in a drizzle. And I'm meeting two other dummies and Mike and all stupid enough like me to head for the club. You drive on the golf course in a drizzle. Very funny. You never minded the rain in New York. 
That's because nobody pays attention to the rain in New York. This town has become a third world vacation home. It's like a United Nations meeting, including the bad food. Brantley, don't let it get around town that you're a racist. Could we keep it as one of our dirty little secrets? It's already around town. I'll talk to you later. I've got to get past this pan-fried idiot and her candy-ass red Lexus. Well, what did your asshole doctor say? He's not an asshole, and he said to try Zocor. You don't need a statin. Look what happened with the Lipitor. He wants to get my LDL cholesterol down to 70-something. It's total bullshit. Why don't you cut out the red meat and BLTs on toasted white with mayo? Branch, I get it. Everyone who doesn't agree with you is total bullshit. Okay, okay, but don't come crying to me when you get the same muscle pain and side effects with the Zocor. Your tongue was so thick you had a lisp. Talk to you later. Later sounds like a good plan. Oh, oh, Moses called with something interesting. Oh dear, I hope this